everyone, it's Marianne, it's all right. And today I'm gonna to be talking about a foot that I feel is so important to have in your sewing with, in your, with your machine, not just for quilting or not just for garment work, but for both. And this would be on the Bernina machines, it would be the ten, number 10 foot. This happens to be the 10C. It does come in a 10 and it comes in a 10D. So depending on your model, depends on which one you might wanna use. I'm gonna use it on the 790 Pro here. I'm gonna use the 10C. Now what is great about this foot is, it's got a guide right here. So in one sense, it's just like your number one C foot, but instead now it has a flange in the middle. That is gonna give you total accuracy on getting your stitches perfectly straight. So now, what is the reason that you're gonna to wanna to have this? Look here, I have two samples of things. Now this isn't just the only reason that you're gonna have it. Here I had two individual pieces of lace and with a, uh, I cranked down the stitch length, uh, the stitch width on a zigzag, so it was real, real skinny. So I joined two pieces of lace. So now, instead of having something very narrow, I can create a wider piece. Now this application could be done with many things. Here I have two pieces of ribbon, and with the same technique, I was able to join with a very skinny zigzag. I was able to join the two pieces of ribbon and create a wider piece. And in here I have a um, thread that's white, um, just as I did on this, so here it's so invisible. Now, technically I would make this thread matching the ribbon, or actually, depending on your uh, project and how it looks, you might want to embellish it with a different color and maybe make this um, a black thread versus a white or a gold. So now let's see how do we start doing things like this. I'm gonna place these aside. Okay, so here I have two pieces of ribbon. And just like the sample I showed you, I'm gonna join these two edges. Now let me point out right now, with the lace and the ribbon, they're both finished edges. Raw edges would not join so easily because they'd be able to be pulled apart easily. So you do want something that has two finished edges. So. I'm gonna put this under the foot and I'm gonna lower the foot and make sure that the two edges of the ribbon or the lace are touching the guide in the center. Now, right now I have my machine set up for plain straight stitch. So I'm gonna to come to my screen and I'm going to choose a zigzag and I'm gonna take that stitch width down in width. I don't want it overwhelming the ribbon and then it would take away from the look of the ribbon. So I'm gonna make my stitch width just a little bit, oh, actually, that was the number I had set it at. The original stitch width had come up at 3.6, and I'm gonna crank it down to just about 2.5. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join these two pieces of ribbon, and because they are so thin, when I go to stitch, it could pull this in. I, what I did was is I started on a scrap piece of fabric behind and that'll act as an anchor that will hold my tail of threads but will also help me when I go to put in the fabric I'm going to start with. So I'm gonna reposition my ribbons, lower my foot, and the machine gives me a little bit of a pivot. I shouldn't say a pivot, it raises the foot just a touch so I can maneuver the ribbons into place. So now, because I do have that starter, the cheater in the back, it's gonna give something to hold onto as I go to stitch. So there we go, all right. So now as I'm going, I am watching this, not my needle. Just keep the two edges together And if you find that they're not grabbing, which they are, then you could go in and change your stitch width. And how close your stitches are as far as stitch length will be up to you on what you want. So right now, I have my stitch length at 1.5. I'm gonna decrease my stitch length a little. We're gonna condense them, because sometimes that can even make it 
even more interesting. It's all up to you and the final result that you want. Okay, so let's see what we have. Here's where I started. This end is where I started. And then I mentioned that I decreased the stitch length, so the stitches, the zigzags became closer together. But it gives it a nice, smooth finish. And the pieces are joined neatly. And now I can use this as part of an embellishment in anything I want, maybe a table runner, even garment work, or a quilt. You can join pieces together. Now think of this same principle. If you have fabrics that don't ravel, such as an ultra suede, wanted to join them together, you could use this t technique. I call this collaging. You got lots of scraps. You could have um, different pieces of different colors. Put them all together with this. And then you have a whole like scrappy piece. Then lay your pattern down and cut it out. So you can make your vest, a jacket, you can make um, a tote bag or a clutch, things like that. So this is where the edge joining, we're joining pieces together with the edge stitching foot. But now let's take this foot to another purpose. I'm gonna go back to plain straight stitch. And when I have two pieces of fabric sewn together, I used white thread so you could see it, joined two pieces, and over here, is my right side of my fabric and I have my seam here. What if I want to get my top stitching right along here, but I want to make sure that I am so perfectly parallel with my seam. I'm going to put my foot down and the guide that's on the foot is going to go into the ditch of the seam. Then I can move my needle position. I'm gonna put my needle over to the right a little bit. It's all up to you how far you want your needle over. You'll decide as you start to stitch. So now, as I go, I'm only watching the guide. Don't watch the needle. Just put the guide and follow the seam. In this case, I'm following the seam. So now my straight stitch is gonna be perfectly parallel to my seam. Now, maybe I want to put my needle over further. Again, I could just move it over some more. Depending on your model, depends on how much versatility that you have with how far over you can put your needles. With the 790 Pro, I have a nine millimeter stitch width, which gives me more needle positions. So depending on your machine, you might have a 5.5 millimeter. So there it will give you a little bit of room to move your needle left and right. But when you have a wider stitch um, plate, stitch opening, you're gonna have more needle positions. So as I said before, here's where I, I put the guide right in the ditch of the seam, and then I stitched, I moved my needle over so that my needle, my thread was following the edge of the, or stitch in the ditch was following just along. But it's perfectly straight with my seam, which is, if you don't have a guide like this, that is extremely difficult to get that precise. And then as I went, I showed you how, what if you want your needle over further? So you, all you gotta do is move your needle position over. But then I was moving my needle to the right. I also have the option to move my needle to the other side. So I'm gonna put my foot back with the guide in the ditch. And now I'm gonna move my needle to the right. Now, this in this particular case, I do have my seam pressed to one side. So when I do this, you're gonna realize that I'm only going through one layer. But it's just to show you the versatility of how you can move your needle position, use the guide, and still get that straight parallel stitch. I could have pressed my seams open and done this technique. And then when I did that, then my stitching now would be securing each edge underneath securely so that they don't um, open or close. So there I have my 
straight stitch over here. So needle positions, put your guide in the ditch and then move your needle position where you want it. Here's another example. Imagine this is my hem. I'm going to put my guide right on the edge and I'm going to be able to stitch along here. So this could be a hem on a garment. So now as I'm stitching, all I'm doing, again, is watching my guide along the edge of the garment. So now I stitch all the way. And we're on slow speed, so we're going to move a little. So let's see what that looks like. My stitching is perfectly parallel with my edge. Now, as another example, how this is great is, imagine this was a pants leg or a sleeve on a garment and I had it in perfect circle. I would take my accessory tray off and I'd slide my leg or my sleeve on. And as I do my garment, I'm sewing my hem, I would sew all the way around my whole piece. Then when I came back to where I started, so here I'm, here's where I would have started. Now I can move my needle position into a new spot. Maybe I want to put my needle closer to here. So I'm going to move my needle position over. I'm going to lower my needle to see where it lands. You know, on the 790 Pro, oh, this is so good. I'm going to touch the laser. So I'm going to touch this on the screen. And then right in there, it's showing me where my needle will land. So now I wouldn't have to necessarily lower my needle to see. I'm going to be able to see that right there. So now as I stitch, my beam follows my needle. Or I should say my beam is just ahead of my needle. Look at that beautiful, perfectly parallel stitch. Try to get that without that foot. Like a, This is a great foot to have in your accessories. I consider it a necessity. Whether you're garment sewing, quilting, or doing any kind of home deck work, gotta have it. Okay, hope you enjoyed the class. See you soon. Have a good day. Bye.